Take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your life. Psychologist, author, speaker, musician, former professor, and the host of Love and Life, Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. Welcome to Love and Life. I'm Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. Last week's episode generated a lot of feedback about beliefs, subconscious and conscious beliefs, and how they're related to our thoughts and how when we address our thoughts and drill down to ascertain the meaning beneath them, we have power to address that meaning and change it if it isn't serving us. So I did some posts on Instagram this week breaking down the connection with beliefs and the meaning and the thoughts and the feelings. And one of the comments I received got me thinking. The comment was simply, well, yeah, no one wants to think negative thoughts, but how do I stop? And I thought, you know, I talk about that pretty much every week on the podcast to a degree, Obviously, the theme of this show is take charge of your thoughts, take charge of your life. So I'm always touching on that. But it occurred to me, I've never really devoted an entire episode to looking at the strategies from cognitive therapy that we can all use every day to help us address and manage and tackle those negative thoughts. So realizing that, yes, this is the theme of the show, and yes, I touch on it every week, but no, I haven't devoted an entire episode to this topic, I thought it made perfect sense to delve into this in depth today, especially coming from the themes from last week's episode and the themes that I touched on on Instagram this week, I wanted to really give some designated time to looking at and understanding and helping all of us have the opportunity to use research-based strategies from cognitive therapy to help us all think in ways that can serve us and serve our goals in life. So to do this, I've invited back to the program psychotherapist and my bestie, Kate Lambie, You'll remember her as the equine mental health professional who was on the program last year in an episode called Horses Heal, The Power of Equine Psychotherapy. That's episode number 54 if you're interested in that. And today she's here to share some of the strategies she uses with her clients that are the same strategies that we can all use to help us thrive in love and life by taking charge of our thoughts. Kate, welcome to the program again. Hi, thanks for having me again. Okay, I'm going to jump right in, and you will not be surprised where I'm going to start this conversation because you know me, and you know one of the things that I feel very strongly about as professionals in this space, to me, we can start a conversation about negative thoughts, and Absolutely, I want to tackle them. And you know, my style is I want to dispute them, and we're going to get into all of the ways that we can do that. But to me, it's very important to start this conversation by just recognizing that there is no therapist, there is no pill, there's no self help book, there's no podcast episode that's ever going to be able to completely eradicate from our lives and from our experiences negative thoughts. Correct. Yeah. (laughs) And I think that's where we get that first principle from act of acceptance. And for those of you who've been listening to the podcast for a while, you are very familiar with act because you remember my interview with Dr. Stephen C. Hayes, the founder of act. If anyone isn't familiar with that and wants to check back, it's uh, episode 65, liberate your mind to address depression and anxiety interview with Dr. Stephen C. Hayes. But Kate, yeah. I love that you bring up acceptance. And I will say, when I first came across ACT, I thought, I don't want to accept these these emotions. I'm going to fight them. I don't want to have negative thoughts. I know that my negative thinking is what's making me feel bad. So I'm going to fight it. But then we went to the intensive and I became a believer and realized that part of 
act and also just part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. And you know, it troubles me because when we then pathologize every single negative emotion or negative thought Mm -hmm. or every anxious moment, oh, I have anxiety, or, or you're just anxious because you're about to speak in front of 300 people which everyone would be nervous in that situation. It, it concerns me because then we pathologize parts of human existence that are actually quite normal. Definitely. And I, I think, too, if we just think about therapy in general, I mean, think about the typical client coming in. They yeah. are coming because they want to get rid of what's happening either in their lives, or life or the emotion that they're feeling, right? Yeah. They're wanting that to change. Yeah. And I'm all... That's, I, that's what the point is. Yeah. Yeah, and I want them to do that, but I also don't want us to get into this space where we think that every time we have a negative thought or have a negative emotion, that we must be, there, there must be a diagnosis now and that we must be completely off, off kilter. No, it's also just part of living. It is. Definitely. And I think that first part of therapy and engaging with your client is that piece of acceptance and normalizing some feelings, especially if there's an adjustment going on. I love that normalizing. And I think that, that that's a therapeutic term that is exactly what it sounds like, right? You just normalize because so often, <laughs> and we do it to each other as friends, don't we? Like, like the other day you called me because you're going through some life changes mm-hmm. and you were like, and I feel this and this and this. I was like, yeah, that's normal. And you're like, but I don't want to feel. Yeah. But there's no way you would not feel. It, it actually would be abnormal if you didn't feel exactly. anxious and nervous going through what you're going through right now. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not like we're trying to keep it from, I mean, Kate's doing, she's branching out and she's starting a private practice. Well, she's done a private practice, but she's going to make that her full-time job now. I just felt like we were being unnecessarily vague. Like, we're not going to talk about her issue. (laughs) We'll talk about her issue. It's no big deal. But yeah, Yeah. it's exciting. It's exciting and scary as it should be, right? And and that's mm -hmm. also an important point, Mm -hmm. right? Because we would love that our emotions would be, I'm either all angry or all sad or all happy or all elated. And frankly, most of the circumstances we encounter in life are a mixed bag. Mm-hmm. There's parts that feel very exhilarating, exciting, and there's parts that go, ah, I'm freaking out. Oh, yeah, for sure. So normalizing that for clients is a first step. Yeah, and normalizing it's- for sure. And accepting, accepting what is. But that's the hardest part. Um because that takes patience and that takes calming the mind and that takes being present. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people want quick fixes, right? Oh my gosh, they so. do. They do. And I can't blame them. Mm-hmm. And also our culture is very much a quick fix culture. We have microwave ovens because we can't spend 15 minutes heating something up in the oven. We have For to sure. do it in 15 seconds, right? Sure. We have drive throughs because our fast food isn't fast enough. That's true. <laughs> to walk That's into right. McDonald's, I need to drive through. So we do culturally, we don't like to take time. And so that flies in the face of therapy too. Although not to say that everyone needs to be in Freudian analysis for 20 years. I mean there mm-hmm. is a place for brief strategic therapy. Mm-hmm. But also we have to understand that Anything that we want to address, and again, we're talking about negative thoughts today, mm-hmm. none of it is going to be a quick fix. Nope. Nope. The, the And I talk about this a lot on the podcast, and I know you'll appreciate this because I know it's the way that you think as well, is if I'm going to try to train my mind to think in a more positive, empowering way, it's very similar to going to the gym, mm-hmm. right? I'm not going to be the body down specimen I want to be after one session in the gym. And that's the same with, with anything we're doing, whether it's therapy or training ourselves just independently. It totally is. And I think um, that's the hardest part about therapy and really committing to the work is, you know, we're really asking you to start building changes and little changes and little habits in your life to help you start to maybe change that or to notice thoughts. Um, so, and th- that part in itself is hard for people too. Yeah. And I love that you talk about habits because really that's what it is. It's like anything in life that when we make it a habit, then it becomes default mode and easier. Mm -hmm. And it's something I personally experienced quite a bit because there was a time in my life where I'd gotten into some some negative thinking and my listeners know it was was surrounding my relationships and Mm -hmm. here I was, no man in sight. And I started getting some defeatist mentality of about my relationships and it took intentional 
like you said, first noticing. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't even notice that our default mode has sadly become so negative, Mm -hmm. we start seeing the world through this very negative lens and we don't even know we're doing it. It's very true. We're not even aware. It's like I talked about last week with Elliot about subconscious beliefs. If they're there and they're operating and they're having an influence and we don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And that's why... You know, a practice of mindfulness or a meditation allows us to at least notice where our thoughts are. Are our thoughts in the future all the time? Are they in the past? Um, Are we always saying, what if, what if, what if? Are we kind of more in the past of, oh, I should have, I should have, I should have? And at least in that part, we can start noticing them. And then that is when we can then begin maybe changing or altering or noticing helpful or unhelpful thought patterns. I love that because, again, as we talk therapist to therapist, we can talk shop, and that's great, but I also want to leave the listeners with some real practical steps. So step one is notice. Yes. Yeah. And actually, I'm going to pull something out. I have a little um, acronym that I use for some clients, and it's really great to get yourself present, Um, and it's really just SNACK. So S-N-A-C-K. And so the first, the S is basically slow or stop. Okay. So slow down and stop, whatever's happening. Mm. N, like we're just talking about, is notice. Mm -hmm. A is for acceptance. Mm -hmm. C is be curious about that feeling or thought. And K is kindness. Be kind to yourself. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yep. Something just put in your back pocket. That's a gem. It we're is. we're going to break that down in more depth in the next few minutes. Cause, sure. Yeah. Because why not? Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> Let's connect on social. I'm most active on Instagram at Dr. Karen. That's D-R dot K-A-R-I-N. On Twitter, I'm at Dr. Karen Anderson. Live tweet with me when I watch my favorite shows, Will and Grace, my brand new fave, God friended me. And of course, all shows Bachelor Nation. Join me on Facebook where I'm stepping up my Facebook Live game. I'm at Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. So I love this snack acronym because I think it's it's succinct. It's something we can remember, like you said, put in our back pocket and really use. So let's take a few minutes to really kind of break down each element of snack and how you teach your clients to use it and to be able to benefit from it. Because I think we could all do that in our, I mean, I like it already. I'm like, wait, when do I stop? I don't think I stop too often, right? Because Mm -hmm. we're in this very fast paced world and we're frenetic and we got stuff to do. And so even just a reminder that, you know what, sometimes to be emotionally healthy, to be emotionally aware of what's going on with me, I need to stop and slow down. Yes. And it's, again, maybe one of those habits or daily rituals that you may have to intentionally Mm. um, start practicing on your own and intentionally putting 10 minutes, 15 minutes um, and build it into your schedule. These are, you know, these are habits that we we don't want to seem awkward or very hard. It's something that maybe you're already doing, but maybe to take that time to slow down when you're doing it. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's something that, like you said, if we don't take the time or schedule it, everything else will crowd out. Yes. And so just making a habit um, of just slow. Sometimes um, I just recommend for my clients to say in their minds, slow, Mm. (laughs) because we're just rushing, rushing, rushing. Um, to the next task or the next event or the next um, scheduled meeting um, and to just slow everything down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend they do that even in the moment that they're feeling something and they really can't ascertain, I don't know what this feeling's about, like they're not able to unpack like we were talking about. There is a thought that's related to that feeling, but maybe that thought is not accessible to them in the moment. So even in that moment, you just say, hey, listen, don't get overwhelmed by this feeling. Just be slow. Be, 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 just stop and be, totally. yeah. Because a lot of people, sometimes people, and I would think most of the time people feel an intense feeling maybe. Mm-hmm. And then they're searching, oh, what is maybe the thought to this? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, if there's an overwhelming feeling um, or intense feeling, um, 
uncomfortable, intense feeling, um, I think the number one thing to do is just slow down, pause, mm-hmm. stop, and sometimes accompany that with a deep breath mm-hmm. and sometimes even closed eyes. Mm. Um, it's kind of a good reset. I love that. And it really does lead us to the next part of snack, which is notice, right? Mm-hmm. Notice. And that is, again, so trying to, and I, this week on Instagram, I posted a, a little graphic and I just made it up from all my CBT years and all my, my love of cognitive therapy. And I broke it down and it was a feeling and then the thought and then the meaning and then the belief that is the foundation of it all. Because sometimes if we have that visual, and then I gave an example of someone being divorced and they would feel so differently based on the belief that they had about divorce, right? And you break it down each step. And then I talked about when I called off my wedding Mm -hmm. years ago and how if I thought of a failed engagement or broken engagement as one thing, then it leads all the way up to a feeling of I'm a failure, right? Mm -hmm. Or if I think of it as, you know, well, no, a broken engagement is an indication of someone who's courageous, that leads to a feeling that's quite different, right? Mm -hmm. And so just noticing sometimes may entail trying to do a little bit of a little cognitive exercise of trying to unpack Mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And also, I think, going to body awareness and body scanning of noticing what is happening. So what is my current experience within me? Um, So noticing any, um, any sensations in the body and things like that. Oh, my heart is beating faster. Oh, I'm noticing some tenseness. Um, I'm noticing I have a headache. I'm noticing I'm extra tired today. Um, Just really kind of scanning. Mm. Um, where am I feeling this and kind of, yeah, mm-hmm. noticing where that is in your body. Is that a tightness in the chest? Is that a tightness in the shoulders? And again, it's just being more present, isn't it? Just being Definitely. more in touch with what's actually happening in sure. this moment. Right. And so we're not making um, decisions and choices in the emotional part of the brain. Ooh, let's speak more to that. Because I think here, it what. What it makes me think of is, I don't want to say control, but I'm going to say control. <laughs> is that I want to say control like someone who's a control freak, who's super rigid, right? Mm-hmm. But I want to say that if I am noticing what's going on, taking that, taking things slowly, taking that stop, taking time to notice, then I'm not as reactionary, right? I'm able to make a choice that's aligned with what I really want to do, not an emotional reaction, but a true response. Bonds. So able to act instead of react. Ooh, that's so good. That's so good. That to me is empowered. Definitely. That's what I, so maybe control is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? No, but when we're, when we are reacting to things, we actually increase the intensity of feeling actually more out of control Yes, because we are just responding out of right. just reacting. Right. And I can't help but go back to act because mm-hmm. it talks about our choices, our decisions, our behaviors are in line with our chosen values. Mm-hmm. And so if we're able to respond or act, not react, that is an opportunity for us to go, wait, okay, despite this emotion I'm feeling, despite where I, my head is, let me take a second and make sure that whatever I do next is in line with my chosen values. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to A, which is acceptance. Acceptance. Yeah. So help the listeners understand that when we say acceptance, we're not trying to say, I accept that I will be depressed and miserable and have high anxiety for the rest of my life. (laughs) (laughs) Because that doesn't sound too empowered. No. Um I think a metaphor that I like to use with a lot of my clients is that emotions are like clouds in the sky. So, um, and how would you describe? So let's just do this, Dr. Karen. So, <gasps> oh, am I in the hot seat? I'm yeah. the client? Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> so when you think of like clouds in the sky, what do you know about them? Um, I know that they come and go. I know that they are like sometimes big, but then they get full of water and then they rain and then they go away. They change to a different shape, a different form. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I know that some days there's tons of clouds and some days it's bright, clear skies. Exactly. Yes. So we are accepting for the moment for what is happening. Okay. Not really knowing what the next moment is going to bring. So that's why we're living in the present and accepting what's happening in the present. So even if it's a negative thought. Yes. Because guess what? Even on a cloudy day, are we saying, well, we can't live today? No, can't, I don't. Can't, can't do it. <laughs> can't do things that matter to me today. You know, matter to me today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to accept, dang, this is a cloudy day and it makes me feel like icky and actually I don't feel like getting out of bed, but I know I need to do this, this, and this because it matters to me a lot mm. and matters to my future goals and matters to my life in general. It's so great connecting with all of you via the podcast, and I would love to meet you IRL. If your organization is looking for a speaker for your next event, check out my website, go to the speaking page, and see the content that I love to talk about. Just like on the podcast, in my speeches, I cover a wide array of topics grounded in psych research, of course. I'd love to meet you and share strategies for thriving in all realms of love and life with you and your organization. I cannot recommend Dr. Karen enough as your speaker at your event. As my keynote speaker, she completely set the tone of compassion, self-love, and authenticity that bled into everything we did for the rest of the event. She was incredibly prepared and present and went above and beyond when it came to sharing the event with her audience. Her knowledge, magnetic energy, and expertise while on stage is one thing. It will be everything you'd hope for and more for your audience. But her giving spirit and willingness to do more than simply show up when it's time to go on is icing on the cake. She walks her talk, and by the end of working with her, I was wishing she lived down the block from me for weekly meetups. For more information and to book me to speak at your next event, contact my producer, Tim May, tim at loveandlifemedia.com. So in preparing for this episode, I asked folks on Instagram to let me know some of their negative thoughts. And some of them were really rough. I mean, really sad, pervasive, frustrating thoughts that I know I would not want to have floating around my head all the time. And you're saying yet Mm -hmm. that we have to, even these really troubling, disturbing thoughts that we do not want, we have to sometimes accept them. Well, that would depend on what maybe your values are too. Oh, keep going. Well, I mean, depending on what life that you would like for yourself. Mm Mm-hmm you um, have to question whether or not those helpful pat- those patterns of thinking are going to be ultimately helpful to get you to your values or your goals or unhelpful. So we can accept the moment, which includes this negative thought, and then kind of look at it and go, all right, well, what am I going to do with you? I accept that you're here. Well, yes, I accept. we accept that you're here. Uh-huh. And then we get curious about it. Ooh. We're getting to the sea, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, keep going then. Yeah, so how does this accepting and then curiosity help me eventually? Now, this is not going to sound very act, but how do I eventually get rid of this thought? Because, Kate, <laughs> I don't want this thought. So just so you know, because I am an act therapist, I will not tell you that we will get rid of this. What? No, we will not. <laughs> In fact, we will not. <laughs> and I want to keep with this topic for a moment because... I think it's something I know that I personally struggled with and I I see the value in accepting. And I know another act kind of imagery experience that you can do is to think of thoughts as leaves on a stream and you see this stream in front of you and the leaves are just floating down the stream and you see them, and then they're there. So you get a little detachment, maybe, or sure. distance from that Diffusion. thought. Mm-hmm. Diffusion, yes, that's the act mm-hmm. term. And so how does that, though, help me deal with the thought? Because I, I'm i going to play devil's advocate here. I'm going, oh, I see that leaf on the stream, but it's still there. Maybe it's down here, but it's still there, and I would really like it not to be there. Yeah, so... 
I guess this is where we would get into, especially with ACT, about maybe being present in mindfulness. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we notice. And when you are noticing, and I guess going back to the noticing, mm-hmm. N, is um, describing and not judging. Ooh. I judge a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Because I'm judging that thought as negative, right? That's a judgment right there. Correct. And I'm judging that I don't want that negative thought in my life. Yes. Right. Which, again, everything you're saying, if we're going to look at it, yeah, go ahead. the lens of act would be probably unhelpful. <gasps> Wait a minute. Am I unhealthy with my thought pattern? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you want to look at the whole philosophy of it and the acceptance of it is the fact that instead of pulling and tugging and pushing and plucking and all this stuff, we're actually leaning in. Mm. We're leaning into it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've ever seen, and sometimes I use this as an example, um, you know those Chinese finger torture things? Yeah. Put your fingers on either side, and what happens is, right, you start pulling, pulling, pulling. You're like, oh, I just want to get it off. What the heck? Why is this not working? And you find out at the end that the key is really just pushing in Mm -hmm. and leaning in. So that's the same thing of... And that, again, they are all con- kind of connected is that acceptance of, okay, I'm leaning into what is happening in this moment now, and I'm learning to tolerate this, this emotion, this negative thought for a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. knowing that eventually it will pass, maybe slowly, maybe really quick, um, and being able to bear that maybe with some presence, maybe with some deep breathing, And again, to me, that's very empowered because it's a choice to sit with it, but Mm -hmm. to not let it overwhelm me Mm -hmm. or to ruin my entire day or Mm -hmm. it's, it's a choice again. And like you said, it's in service of chosen values because one would say, I'm going to value every bit of my experience even the parts that I may have previously or someone like me is going to judge as unwelcome or negative. But wait a minute, I can show myself that I can sit with these Mm -hmm. and I can be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, the thing is about like moving through uncomfortable emotions. I always like just that language. Mm. It's just like moving through. So we're not trying to block we're not trying to, you know, step aside from feeling that and avoiding. We are feeling it. We're moving mm-hmm. through it to mm-hmm. get to the other side of it. And uh, Dr. Hayes talked about when he was on the podcast, he talked about the dictator within and that diffusion you spoke of, mm-hmm. taking even just identifying or labeling that negative voice that negative thought as that voice of the dictator, that in and of itself creates Creates a little distance. Yeah. Yeah. And also I know some people say too, and start a practice again, we're going back to habits and practices um, of when they are noticing their thought, starting to say, I'm noticing the story that I'm telling myself. Ooh, that's good. It's a great one. Ooh. Right. Um, And again, creating that distance. That's what we want. We want to start creating that distance to be able to observe it and not have it be a part of us and have to believe this is us and this is a part of us and who we are. So that's why creating that distance is so helpful. Again, being able to then move through that um, with not acting out of maybe the emotional brain. And I want to highlight that story bit because when I think about some of the negative thoughts that my Instagram community shared with me. Many were stories, Kate. They were things like I'm ultimately I'm unlovable Mm. or I'm alone now and I'm going to be alone for forever or I'm not worthy of love. These were the kind of themes, many Mm -hmm. variations on that. And, and I love that you called a story Mm -hmm. because what does a story do? Again, it, there's a, a distance now. This is the story I'm telling myself. And we all know stories are not always true. They're not always true. And we're also able to kind of change our story, right? Yeah. Different ending. Mm -hmm. So these strategies allow us to actually accept negative thoughts, which are leading to negative emotions. And eventually we're going to feel better. 
Again, that is not the goal. <gasps> no, I want to feel better, Kate. Well, the paradox of it is that ultimately going through these steps, you notice and may notice some changes and um, maybe maybe some relief, but that's not the ultimate goal here. The ultimate goal is to experience and move through. So with an ACT perspective, it's really more about accepting that negative feelings, negative thoughts are going to be part of our experience always and moving through them despite, so moving toward our chosen values, still doing what matters to us in this life despite these negative elements, thoughts, feelings. Yeah? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And and Mm -hmm. in that experience, we're going, they will dissipate. I'm quite sure. And there's a ton of research on ACT too. Because there is. <laughs> oh, there I, is. I just there want my is. listeners, because I think that they might be like, wait, I'm, I'm just supposed to accept all this. And wait, I do want some relief. But we're, we're trying to let go of the struggle. Mm. That's the point of what's happening. Because really, the philosophy is the struggle is actually what's making things worse. Okay. So it's right? not so, so much. the struggle of like, oh, I just can't get it right. Or, oh, this negative thought, I just need to get rid of it. It actually makes it bigger. Mm, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Then if we're accepting it, yes, maybe we still, you know, it's uncomfortable, but we're accepting it and then we're not blowing it up bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and adding different emotions and rage and more anxiety. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're... By leaning in and by accepting, we're letting go of the struggle, which the struggle itself is making us even more uncomfortable and even more unhappy. Yep. Yep. I like it. What about the curiosity piece? How does that fit into all this? Yeah. So it's really just being curious about maybe the feeling or the thought that you have experienced or are experiencing. So questioning yourself, why, why, where is this coming from? Right? Yeah. So after I'm noticing this thought or this feeling and I'm accepting it for what it is right now, um, hmm, I wonder where this came from. Mm-hmm. So if it's fear, what is this fear about? Mm-hmm. What is it really about? Which kind of goes back to what I was telling you I did this week on Instagram, which is if I'm feeling this, what is, what is this about? So the curiosity of what's the thought behind that? And what, what is this meaning that I've ascribed to this Definitely. belief, to Definitely. this situation? Mm-hmm. And is it possible that there's some wiggle room, right? Is it possible Definitely. I could reinterpret this? Definitely. And again, we're creating that space again yes. right? to be able to um, observe um, and then being able to maybe have, have it change a little bit and see where that goes. Mm-hmm. And I think that experience provides relief often. And again, the distance provides really all of it is going to. Sure. I mean, and again, distance and observing, you're taking away that judgment, Mm -hmm. right? Because you're creating that distance and and you're you're kind of describing and observing instead of like, oh, this is the worst thought ever. Mm -hmm. I just can't get it right. Right. Again, Mm -hmm. that's that judgment. I remember from the ACT training, they talked about even if you have a negative thought, like one of the ones I got this week was, I'm going to be alone forever and I'm going to miss out on having kids. And even the simple, not easy necessarily, but the simple practice of going, huh, I'm having the thought that I'm going to be alone for forever and I'll miss out on having kids. That in and of itself provides some distance and the intensity of the emotion that accompanies that thought, the fear, the anxiety, the terror, that is dissipated. Well, and I'd say that um, when you do create that distance, it it is more malleable. So you're able to observe it and maybe question it and maybe even lean into it. Mm. And um, again, connecting to your values. um, Is this a helpful thought for me or is this an unhelpful thought for me? of how I value I want to be in life and where I want to go and what matters to me. 
Yeah. And I remember him talking about this dictator where you could just be like, hey, dictator, thanks for coming out. <laughs> I hear you. I know you're freaked out about this. Mm-hmm. It, okay, point taken, but you've had your say, and now I got to move on about my day because really mm-hmm. you clamoring and, mm-hmm. and yelling at me that I'm going to be alone for forever and have no right. children. Right. And I'm, I'm guessing, you know, that being a negative thought, um, this person could be getting stuck there. Yeah, I think so. And that so. is then where we question that helpfulness of that. Are right. You, are you getting stuck there and are you getting stuck in these uncomfortable, intense emotions and not able to move through that and um, see other parts of your life that you're able to be grateful for mm. or focus on? Mm-hmm. And again, that's why that's important then if you are getting stuck to then create maybe that distance with some of these practices, like saying, you know, I'm noticing the thought that I'm having is. And this woman, what if she said, hey, you're talking about values, but this is in line with my values because I want a family and I want a husband and I want children. So where would you go with that? If she pushed back against this whole philosophy that we're presenting and said, no, this isn't consistent with my values. And so I'm having this thought because that's something I desperately want in my life. Right. But I mean, As your therapist, right, I can't tell you that that is going to happen for you. Right. Right? I mean, I don't have control over that. Mm -hmm. And how much control do you have over that? I mean, there might be some aspects of the control she has, but ultimately, what control does she have over it? Right. And so, again, we kind of go back to the acceptance and leaning in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we have to actually face the big monster face on. Which is, could that happen? It could happen. Mm -hmm. And this reminds me of another core concept of ACT, which is psychological flexibility. And why this comes to mind here is I think about, there may be some rigidity in this thought. Sure. Right? That I have to have a husband and I have to have kids. Sure. Or else my life is worthless. Sure. Or else my life is a failure. Or else my life has no meaning. Sure. And what I love about that psychological flexibility, and it's related to a ton of research that shows that we're healthier and happier and everything that we want in life, we we are more likely to experience when we are able to be more flexible mm-hmm. in our perspectives and in our experience. And here I would I would suggest part of her working or moving through mm-hmm her thoughts and feelings on this would be to consider some flexibility. Mm -hmm. Does it have to look like the stereotypical two kids, husband, picket fence? It might look different than that. And again, going back to like what I talked about this week, what's the meaning is the belief that if I don't have that stereotypical quintessential little family, then my life is less than. And that's where we have the choice because we determine the belief. We determine if we're going to have a very rigid belief that says it has to look exactly like this or else. And uh, that's where the power is. It is. But also, I think it's important to mention that beliefs are deeply entrenched. And it definitely takes time to work through those beliefs and to eventually maybe transform them to maybe other helpful beliefs. Yeah. And again, because they're entrenched, we may not even be aware of them until we've, like you said, going back to the beginning of snack, until we've taken some time to stop Mm -hmm. and then notice. So this is all, it all works together. Dan invented it because I kept burning my tongue on my black coffee. And then we realized the perfecter could do so much more. It's the only way to brew coffee or tea and then immediately ice it for iced coffee or iced tea without watering down the flavor. It also brings bourbon to a perfect chill, again, without diluting it or bruising the flavor notes. But my favorite application, wine. The Perfector takes your room temperature red to the recommended low 60s in just 20 seconds. And as a bonus, the Perfector aerates your vintage as well. 
Check out all the Perfectors applications, including bringing white wine to its most flavorful temperature at drinkperfection.com. Love and Life listeners can use promo code PODCAST at checkout for 20% off your Perfector. And getting back to snack, what is our K, Kate? K is kindness to self. Mm. It's a little um, self-compassion, um, definitely. Um, while you're going through um, maybe intense emotions or negative thinking and accepting and all of this, to really just be kind to yourself, whatever that may be. Whether that means um, some self-care where... Maybe you're going to then go take a bubble bath and listen to some really good music. You're going to maybe call a friend for some kindness and some feedback um, or paint or something that you really enjoy doing that brings you into a kind of calm, present um, state. So any type of kindness to yourself. And maybe that's just even self-talk, right? So Mm -hmm. I like Mm -hmm. (laughs) self-talk. Some kind kind self-talk. So I have an entire part two to this that I think because you had so much great stuff, Kate, I'm just going to save that for another episode and we'll just wrap up now. So I want to thank you for joining me today and sharing all this act goodness with listeners. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed it. Great. Yeah. And I really appreciate it. And please let the listeners know where to find you if they want to reach out, where you are on social, and if they happen to be in Illinois, Chicagoland area, they could connect with you, right? Yes. Um, I actually have a location in Lock in Lockport, Illinois, and uh, Chicago. Uh, if you go on Psychology Today, I do um, have a page there, and if you just look up, look up North Star Restorative Counseling, you will find uh, my little page there and gives information about my specialties and my locations. And my email is northstarrestorativecounseling at gmail.com. And where are you on the gram? On the gram, I am at Kate Lambie LCPC. The love and life hack for this week is snack. Stop. Take things slowly. Notice, accept, be curious, and practice kindness. Take charge of your thoughts. Take charge of your life. The strategies that Kate talked about today will absolutely help you do that. In part two, we'll look at other techniques from cognitive therapy to help us take charge and manage those negative thoughts that try to creep in and take us down. Thanks again for joining us today and for subscribing to the podcast and rating and reviewing episodes. I really appreciate it. And until next time, make it a great week. Love and Life is produced by Tim May and hosts and executive producer, Dr. Karen Anderson-Abril.